Wyala was built on the back of One Steel Steelworks. While its economic contribution was well recognised, environmental and social impacts from the pallet plant were starting to take its toll on the community, and before long, One Steel's operations were under threat from regulators and legal action. This is the story of how a company changed its approach to the community to regain their social licence to operate. The impact of their, their pellet plant with the hematite red dust was horrific. All the properties were being regularly coated from 1968 uh, with uh, red dust. It was a range of, uh, of band-aid measures to try and uh, reduce the uh, the dust clouds, um, but the dust continued to uh, continue to fall. We were battling on under our own resources. The thing was becoming more confrontational as we went along. Very confrontational. Then we decided that, well, we need some help on this, so we went to the Environment Defender's Office. One Steel now faced regulatory restrictions on its production licence, and on top of this, the Wyala Red Dust Action Group successfully launched legal action in the Environment, Resources and Development Court. With their backs to the wall, One Steel eventually negotiated an indenture with the South Australian government to allow it to continue to operate in the short term. Despite this, One Steel's future was uncertain. The EPA and the community were outraged. I decided that I was never going to give up until this thing was fixed. Because I didn't know what to do, to be honest. Uh, and that's where we got Catherine and Future Eye involved. They've got a choice about whether they want to keep on reacting or whether they want to move on to being sort of proactive. The first thing we did was to engage with Mark Parry and really get him to understand why we thought the problem existed and what he could do about it and set up a strategy where he and I were aligned around the direction. We made a clear decision that we would use Future Eye as the conduit between ourselves and stakeholders. Future Eye got involved, and it was just as well they did. We started this, this sort of relationship where we were cautiously optimistic, but very wary of each other. This went on for a fair while, but we got more and more trusting of each other. And from that trust came good things. One Steel's first steps towards changing their approach with the community coincided with the rollout of a technical solution to reduce the red dust called Project Magnet. I saw Magnet as a huge opportunity. I was damn certain it was going to fix the problem. But technical fixes are only part of the solution. You've got to listen to your stakeholders. And by that I mean really listen. Not go there and tell them what's going to change. Just listen. Try and understand. We've probably moved from seeing external people who give us feedback, no longer as people who complain, but as an early warning to those things that potentially cause outrage and might demonstrate that we're starting to fall off the path. One Steel seriously did look at what it is that they were doing and how it is that they were interacting with the community. One Steel were becoming more reasonable, they were starting to see the community's point of view. And they're starting to see you can't, you can't really run a business properly if you've got the community that you're supporting offside. The more we use Future Eye, the more opportunities we saw, like working with the ECG, helping us with the community forum, being a conduit to the Red Dust Action Group when they didn't want to talk to us. One Steel decided, and I think it, Future Eye put this process in the, in the plan with One Steel, was that what they called their ESR, their Environmental and Social Responsibility Program. And that's the best thing that's ever happened uh, to, to any company. Success from our point of view um, at the end of the day was that the government is happy, that the company is happy and that the community is happy. They've got a good result, they've got confidence in a predictable um, ownership from the community um, about the social, environmental, culture and responsibility of the company. Everybody wins. And that's what, you, that's what you're after in these things. If you can get a win-win situation, you're a mile in front. The take-home message is that before decision-making processes uh, commence, communities need to be involved. And they need to be involved in a way that is, uh, is genuine. Mark Parry and Eddie Hughes shared their stories at a Future Eye business forum. Satisfied with what had been achieved with one steal, Ted Kittle did not attend. 
he disbanded the Wyala Red Dust Action Group and retired from activism. Business, communities and government can learn a lot from the One Steel story. You're dealing with something that takes a long time, but let's start the journey. Yeah, it's a great story. Let's start the journey.